gentleman from Texas, Mr. Gomert, is recognized for question. Chairman, oh. um, Director, welcome back. Last we spoke, we weren't expecting to see each other in this setting again. And uh, as the chairman pointed out, you got an additional two years. Uh, there was no objection to your having two years because they presented at a time when nobody knew they were going to be bringing up your uh, extension of two years, so there was nobody else on the floor, and uh, it went rather smoothly since nobody knew they were bringing it up. Um, there are some officers still concerned about the thousands and thousands of years of experience we've lost due to your former five-year up or out policy, but uh, I want to get to the, the uh, concerns about the purging of material, of training material. You know, we have a, a document here that, that points out in the 9-11 Commission report there were 322 references to Islam in the current FBI counterterrorism lexicon. There are zero references to Islam, to zero ever, uh, references to jihad. And you know, when we talked before when you were here about the outreach programs that the FBI had to the uh, Muslim community, uh, we had done something, and apparently in June of 2002, uh, you had given a speech to the American Muslim Council that your spokesman said was, quote, the most mainstream Muslim group in the United States. That's the American Muslim Council. And the head of the AMC was a guy named Alan Moody. Um, that same year, the AMC board advisor, former acting president Jamil Al Amin, was arrested for murdering a Georgia police officer. Uh, Al Amudi was arrested himself in 2003 in a Libyan assassination plot targeting the Saudi Crown Prince, uh, later identified by the U.S. Treasury as one of Al Qaeda's top fundraisers in the U.S. Um, then there is um, the 2003, October 2003, just days before ceremony honoring Detroit Muslim leader Imam Hamad, uh, bestowing on him your own director's award for exceptional public service. The FBI contacted Hamad to tell him he wasn't going to receive the award. Uh, and later, when your spokesman said that uh, there was unflattering information about Hamad that had been made public, during the deportation proceedings of one of his close associates, and uh, the INS had fought for two decades to deport this guy that was about to get the award. Um, he was suspected in supporting the Popular Front of the Liberation of Palestine, or Palestine and uh, that's a de designated terrorist organization. And again, the reason I'm bringing these things up is because we've got people, we know there are three subject matter experts that uh, your office has refused to identify who have gone through and purged these materials. We were not even told whether they were U.S. citizens, whether they're one of these people that would have gotten the didn't get the award, that had all these other suspected problems. We know that uh, Al Aryan, the um, Palestinian Islamic Jihad leader, uh, had meetings and conversations with high-ranking officials at DOJ and Department of Homeland Security. And that was despite him being a subject of a FISA wiretap warrant since the early 1990s, and his home was raided in 95. We know that in 08, you had handed one of your director's community leadership awards to Aman, Iman Aya Hindi, who testified during Al Aryan's trial as a defense witness. And Hindi then served as a moderator during a 2000 fundraiser for the Benevolence International Foundation, which was shut down in 2002 because they were a designated terrorist organization supporting Al Qaeda of all groups. Uh, it, this just goes on and on, and I'm very concerned that since there are people potentially of uh, terrorist organizations, terrorist ties, as we've seen. Uh, that the FBI has made these type of mistakes before in, in trying to judge character. We would like to know who these subject matter experts are that are going through the FBI material and purging that of reference to uh, jihad and Islam and these type of things. Uh, would you identify those people for us? Well, uh, 
there was a, quite a bit in that question. Uh, I can't well, some of it's background that I hope you're aware of. I, I cannot address uh, all of what you it said there. I will say at the outset that we make every effort to make certain that uh, in our outreach, uh, that we uh, outreach to that segment of the Muslim community in support of America. And the vast, vast majority of the Muslim American community has been exceptionally uh, supportive. And you know you're not answering question, Director. If I may, uh, if I may. It's very pointed. Are you going to identify the subject matter experts? That's the question. Finish. My are you, but are you going to let, answer let, that question? Let the, let the director respond to the question. Finish. Uh, I will when he answers the question. Uh, as I was saying, uh, outreach is very important to us, and we make every effort to make certain it's with the appropriate person. With regard to the, the individuals who reviewed the material, there are five individuals, not three, and we're happy to give you their background and consider uh, giving the names if you find it important. Uh, we would hope there would be some uh, confidentiality in doing that, uh, but we have nothing to hide. That. So you will identify those. So we will discuss uh, the circumstances under which we would identify those individuals, yes. All right. And could we also get the documents you produced to the terrorists that were convicted in the Holy Land Foundation trial? I invited Congress to come and look at these documents. A number of Congress persons have come and Okay, I wasn't aware of that. I'll be there to, to look. Thank you. Okay. Right. Gentleman's time has expired. Gentleman from North Carolina, Mr.